<clears throat> You're just a person who likes naked ladies, like I saw in your intro. Amy will be married to Sonic, and Sally will be in a small house eating nothing but ramen noodles and bologna. Ah, Linda, Linda. Well, I'd just like to point out the fact that I am indeed a guy. So that thing about me liking ladies is in fact a... a For the record, Linda, I don't need you to tell me who I am, okay? I'll tell you my damn self. I like women. I can be dirty-minded. And a little perverted, too. But you make it seem like this is news to everybody. Now let me tell you about yourself. You are a typical YouTube commenter who likes to talk shit. Yet, you are not bold enough to deal with the backlash that might come from it. So what do you do? You disable the reply button. Go clop yourself, Flutterfly. For those of you who don't know, let's start from the beginning. Sometime last year, I featured Sally Acorn as episode 14 in Furry Girl Profiles. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend you go see it before you probably watch this video. Doesn't really matter, but uh, it's just a suggestion. As the creator of Play First Cinema, some people like to make up accusations about my channel and assume that I'm making it all based on around nudity. That's false! Yes, Play for Cinema has a little bit of a fan service theme, but its true goal is to spread awareness, to teach. Just like everything else in life, if you do not teach it, sooner or later it will be forgotten. For example, I recently came past a comment, it's, it probably wasn't on YouTube, it was probably somewhere else, but he didn't know who Fifi LaFume was. And Fifi LaFume is not even that old. Tiny Toons came out in 1990. And it's not his fault that he doesn't know who Fifi is. The true blame is on the copyright stingy Warner Brothers. This is a company that's always constantly making stuff for the Looney Tunes every chance they get. Basically, if your name does not include Looney Tunes, or you are not a character under DC Comics, then Warner Brothers is not going to care to push you. But anyway, that's a discussion we can talk about another day. As a person who feels very passionate about this type of stuff, it gave me a chance to say the things I wanted to say and defend the things I felt needed to be defended. And one of those things I felt that was worth defending was Princess Sally Acorn. A character who is the unofficial punching bag of the Sonic world, who can't seem to catch a break no matter what she does. Picked on by testosterone driven fans who must smash anything related to Sonic ever having a love interest. Ooh, ooh, me caveman, me eats only meat, love is for sissies and cynamites. And yet, those are not even her biggest haters. Her biggest haters are the fans of Amy Rose. A pink hedgehog who is known for obsessively chasing around Sonic the Hedgehog, even though he wants nothing to do with her. Despite all the signs that Sonic doesn't want it, these Amy Rose fans eventually formed a shipping group known as Son Amy. <sighs> this is a topic I've been down the road many times with, and it never seems to get old. For those of you who don't know what a shipping group is, a shipping group is a group of people who support a particular pairing of characters who have the possibility of being a couple. And I didn't say a good couple either. And despite what some think, Sonic and Amy do not have a good chemistry. Amy is clingy, whiny, and obsessive, and it freaks Sonic out, who is used to being alone. Do you want to know what this relationship can be compared to? Sasuke and Sakura from Naruto, possibly one of the worst damn cartoon couples of all time. Not only is this pairing very impure, but it just flat out makes no sense. And I say this because very similar to Amy Rose, Sakura did not fall in love with Sasuke for his personality. She fell in love with Sasuke for his looks and because he was the bad boy on campus. And despite the times that Sasuke was willing to kill Sakura, they still end up getting married and having children. So yeah, that's Amy. She's Sakura without the success story. Even though she might love Sonic, she doesn't love Sonic for him. She loves him because he's a hero. I made it perfectly clear on many occasions, I actually don't hate Amy. I actually like her goofy ass, but the thing that makes it so hard to be a fan of hers, or a fan of Sonic in general, is her psychotic fans. They cannot be reasoned with, and they just seem to lack all sense of logic. Now, not all Amy Rose fans are like this. There are actually some good ones. The problem is, there seems to be a large majority that is dragging the rest of them down. Just like Amy, they can be very obsessive. And they will go out of their way to attack anything and everything that disagrees with Son Amy. And oh yeah, let's not forget the fact that they are never satisfied. Spoiled rotten, 
Amy and her fans have been basically given everything they ever wanted. Everything! Since her debut as a manga character, she has had multiple comic appearances, she's had plenty of TV shows, and she's been in damn near every Sonic video game. But what drives them so batshit crazy is the fact that Sega has denied them that one thing in life that they just cannot have. And that is a canon relationship between Sonic and Amy. And because of that, they tried to find and cling on to anything that could possibly give them any hope of that ever happening. So you know what happened next? They eventually discovered the Sonic Archie comic stories. Where, to their dismay, they discovered that Sonic is not in a relationship with Amy. Instead, they found out about a squirrel slash chipmunk who's been fucking Sonic for like the last 20 plus years. So you know what the self-entitled little bastards did next? They slandered Sally Acorn's character and made her far worse than what she actually is. They ripped apart the clothes she wore, her personality, her relationships. And a good 95% of those arguments can be diffused easily because they are all crap. Yes, that also includes the notorious she's a Mary Sue and she's a bitch because she hit Sonic argument. Which ironically, both contradict each other. Because Mary Sue's do not lose their temper and hit people. You wanna know what's so hypocritical about all this? It's only bad because Sally did it. Had it been Amy that had slapped Sonic, all of a sudden it would have been okay. Uh, better yet, Amy has threatened Sonic before. She did it in Sonic Riders. How could you dive into Eggman knowing I was there? Well, Amy, I thought it'd be okay with you and, uh... Uh, what's that? I didn't hear anything. I think I'm going deaf. I don't hear anybody calling Amy a bitch. Let me tell you point blank. I am a Son Alley fan. I am supportive of Sonic and Sally being together. I feel that their chemistry together is good and that their personalities balance each other out. Sonic is the cocky goofball while Sally is the no-nonsense down-to-earth girl. And they're both evenly bullheaded. Go ahead and like sign Amy, that's fine, but one thing you are not getting ready to tell me to do is shut up because you can't accept the fact that other people have preferences. Because as a Son Alley fan, or a fan of Sally Acorn in general, I feel like I've been spat on long enough. As far as I'm concerned, this was an even trade. Even though Amy and Sonic never had a canon relationship, Amy got to appear in everything else, TV shows, games, comics, etc. Meanwhile, even though Sally had a full-blown relationship with Sonic, she stays isolated in the comics. But of course, that wasn't good enough for Sign Amy fans, because instead of being appreciative of all the things they'd gotten, they had to be greedy. Having the nerve to be so incredibly hateful over everything Sally Acorn does and what her fans do. Uh, excuse me, I'm about to be blunt here. What the fuck do they got to be mad about? The absolute audacity. They have no right to be mad about shit. If you are a supporter of Sally Acorn, you should be mad, because it just seems like people just keep taking everything away from you. Son Amy fans don't seem to realize, even though Sally Acorn won the game in terms of Sonic's heart, Amy Rose won the war. Sally Acorn hasn't had her own TV show since 1994. Every video game that she could have possibly been in has been cancelled, with the exception of that crappy ass Sonic Spinball. But you really want to know what the icing on the cake is? Once upon a time, an asshole by the name of Ken Penders tried to actually kill off Sally Acorn. Ken Penders, a former writer to the Sonic Archie comics that caused a copyright firestorm. Why? I don't know. I read that he tried to give Sally a story once and it didn't sell the way he wanted it to, so he took it as a sign that fans hated her and tried to kill her off. Either way, it's Sega's fault, because they should have put him on a leash. Every time he killed off a character and replaced it with his own, he gained more and more control over the story. The irony about the whole thing is, it's Sega who was the one that stopped him. That's right brats that like to scream non-canon, Sega did it because they saw some value in her. Had they not spoken up, Sally would be dead and gone from the story. And they would have had to answer to a whole bunch of hella angry fans. And I don't care how you feel about Sally Acorn, she's a very important character to the story. Much less to having a story where a fake Sonic cuts the bridge and she falls a couple stories. Not only did Penders have to go, but his entire influence had to go with him. 
That means erasing all of his characters. That means a 20 plus year storyline had to be completely reset. And with that came some new rules. So now nobody seems to get have a relationship in the comics no more. Me personally, I never understood all this fighting. Sally and Amy are not even fucking enemies. They're actually close friends. Hell, I don't even think Sally ever saw Amy as a rival to Sonic's affections. And I would say, let's let bygones be bygones, but I know that's just not gonna happen. So, if a Sonic and Amy fan wants to keep screaming non-canon to me, I'm just gonna keep smashing their hopes and dreams about Sonic and Amy ever becoming official. They really don't need that extra boost to their already inflated egos anyway. Anyway, I'm not going to say much more beyond this point. This was just a small spin-off of Sally Acorn's profile video. By the way, feel free to sub back and stick around. Because after I'm finished with Furry Girl Profiles episode 27, the Sonic Girl edition will commence. As well as a lot of other new content I got planned in the future. I'll see you next time!